Today we're going to be talking about how to find a formula for the general term of the sequence a sub n. And in this particular problem we've been given the sequence of numbers 1 half, negative 4 thirds, 9 fourths, negative 16 fifths, and 25 sixths. And we need to find the general term of the sequence a sub n, which is the term where if we kept writing numbers in this sequence we would eventually find some pattern and we could always plug in any number for n to get whatever that specific nth term would be. So whenever you're asked to do this, the first thing that I like to do is write underneath the sequence, write down the specific term that each number in this sequence represents. And what I mean by that is this first term here is the a sub 1 term of the sequence, right? This is a sub 1. It is the first term in the sequence. Negative 4 thirds is the second term in the sequence, so we can call this a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5. You could also do it this way because it's the a sub nth term in the series. This number, this sub number here is n. So you could also write underneath if it's easier for you n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, etc. But I like to use that as a reference because it's going to make writing our a sub nth term much easier. So when it comes to writing the a sub nth term, what you want to do is just break down your sequence into pieces. And in, in this particular sequence, we've got rational terms. So that means I'm going to want to deal with the numerator separately from the denominator. Each one of those is a separate piece of the sequence. We've also got some alternating action here. We have positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, etc. So we're going to have to deal with that. That's three separate things that we can deal with on their own instead of trying to figure out the pattern for each one all at once. So the a sub nth term, let's just look at the numerator here first. So this is where writing down a sub 1, 2, 3, 4 underneath the sequence is really helpful. What we want to do is look at the numerator in relation to this number here that we've written a sub 1. So what is the relationship between the numerator here 1 and a sub 1? Well, in the first term, they're equal to one another, right? If we look at the second term, we have 4 in the sequence here, and this is the a sub 2 term, right? So 4 is 2 plus 2, it's also 2 squared. If we look at the third term, we've got 9 in the numerator, and we have 3 here, the a sub third, a sub 3 term. Okay, well 9 is 3 squared. If we look at the fourth term, we have 16 here, and we have 4. Okay, 16 is 4 squared. So we're starting to see the pattern. The numerator is the square of this value here, the value of n. So what that means is that in the a sub nth term, we're going to call the numerator n squared. So that's the numerator. Now we're going to deal with the denominator, and at the end we'll deal with the alternating action. Okay, so the denominator, if we look at the first term again, here we have 1, right? The denominator here is 2, which is 1 greater. Here we've got 2. In this denominator we have 3, still 1 greater. Here we have 3. The denominator is 4. Okay, so it's always 1 greater than the value of this a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3. So what that means, remember this value is always n. So what that means is that the denominator of this term, this a sub n term, we're going to call n plus 1 because it's just this value, the n value, plus 1. So the denominator is n plus 1. Now all we need to do is deal with the alternation of the positive and negative signs. So one easy trick for remembering how to apply that positive negative, if the series starts with a negative term, if the first term in the sequence is negative, then you want to multiply your a sub nth term by negative 1 to the n. And this is for starts with a negative, starts with a negative. If the series starts with a positive and then the second term in the sequence is a negative, then you either want to multiply by negative 1 to the n minus 1 or negative 1 to the n plus 1. Either one will give you the same result, but this is for the sequence starting with a positive number. 
So in our case, our sequence starts with a positive number, and then we have a negative term in the second spot here. So what we want to do is multiply by either negative 1 to the n minus 1 or negative 1 to the n plus 1. It doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and use negative 1 to the n plus 1. And we can double check ourselves, right? Because if we look at the first term in the sequence here, n is equal to 1 for the first term in the sequence. When we plug 1 in for n, here we get 1 plus 1 in the exponent, which is 2. That's a negative 1 squared, which is a positive 1. So we end up getting a positive 1 for the first term in the sequence, which makes that first term in the sequence positive when we multiply it by n squared over n plus 1. Versus the second term in the sequence, where n is equal to 2, we plug 2 in here and we get 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 1 cubed is a negative 1, which is going to turn the second term in the sequence here negative, and that's the pattern that we want, starting with positive and then negative. Now all we want to do is go ahead and simplify. We usually want to put this negative 1 to the n or negative 1 to the n minus 1 or n plus 1 in the front here. So we'll just say negative 1 to the n plus 1 in the front multiplied by n squared over n plus 1. We can also put that negative 1 to the n plus 1 in the numerator if we want to, but either way works. So this is our final answer for the a sub nth term of this sequence. Now that we have this formula, if we want to find the 16th term in the sequence without having to write out every term in the sequence, all we do is plug in 16 for n, and we'll get the term, the 16th term of the sequence now that we have this general formula.